What's up, high school? Thank you so much for watching. So we are in week three of PRISM, and we are talking about the things that Jesus wishes you knew that you would never forget. He want, there are things that Jesus wants you to know, that he wants you to hold on to, that he never wants you to forget. He wants you to remember them every day when you wake up and every day whenever you're walking around. He wants you to be thinking about those things. And we're gonna dive into a really, really big idea, a really, really big thing that Jesus wants you to hold on to in today's teaching. But before we do, let's pray and then we'll get into it. Our Father, we love you. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you that you gave us your word and that you, so we could know who you are and who we are because of you. Thank you for sending your son so we could know what it looks like to have a perfect relationship with you. And I pray that we would run after that, that we would want to be like Jesus more than we would want to be like anyone or anything else. I pray that you would speak through me today and that wherever and whenever we're listening to this, that it reaches our heart, that we would change because of what we hear. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, PRISM, week three, the things that Jesus wishes you knew that, and that you would never forget. So today we're going to talk about how Jesus came to give you a full life, a full, abundant life, an overflowing life, and what that really looks like. Because the world talks about an overflowing life, and we look at like material possessions, a really big house, a really nice car, the perfect spouse, you get to travel all the time, your uh, social media is always blowing up, everybody wants to know where you are and who you're with and what you're doing and you know famous people and whatever, you know, fill in the blank. Whatever you think an abundant life is, all the nice stuff, all the shoes, all the clothes, and there's nothing wrong with any of that. There really isn't, as long as that isn't your goal. If that happens to be uh, things that you get along the way and people you meet along the way and things you get to do along the way, that's cool. But if you make those things your God, that's whenever you get into trouble. But Jesus came so that we could have life and life to the full. Now let's look at what that really means. A full life is really more about a full relationship with God. It's about finding all your satisfaction in Him, that you could have everything and it wouldn't matter because you had Jesus. Or you could have nothing and it wouldn't matter because you had Jesus. In fact, Paul talks about that in Philippians 4 in one of the most quoted Bible verses in the world. Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And the funny thing about that is, is we use it for like football games and job interviews and tests and stuff. And okay, I guess. But Paul's in prison when he writes that. And it, Philippians 4.13, ironically, unironically, comes right after Philippians 4.12, where Paul says, I've learned to have everything. I've learned to be in abundance. I've learned to live in prosperity. I've learned to live with lack, and I've learned to live with nothing. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So Paul says this. He reinforces this point um, that Jesus came to give us a full life. Paul says, I can have a full life no matter how my life is going because I have Jesus. You can have a full life no matter how your life is going because you have a relationship with Jesus. And that's what Jesus came to show us, is that your life is not about the things that you have. It's not even about all your relationships. Your relationships are great and they're a big deal, but they are not the point of your life. They are not the calling of your life. Um, the calling of your life is to be in relationship with God, to have a full relationship with Him and to get all your satisfaction from Him, to get all the approval that you need from Him, to get all the wisdom that you need from Him. Now, God will send you people to point you to him, but the goal is always him. And that's what Jesus showed us. Jesus was always pointing people to God. Even somebody walked up to Jesus one time and they said, good teacher. And he says, why do you call me good? Jesus, the only perfect person ever to walk the earth. Jesus, who was all God and all man said to this person, why do you call me good? There's no one good, but my father. So even Jesus said, no, no, no. The whole point is not me. Don't look at me. The only reason you should look at me is because I have a perfect relationship with God and all my satisfaction comes from my Father. And so when we say we want to be like Jesus, we should be saying, I want to have the same kind of full life that Jesus came to give me. So when Jesus would teach, the same way we teach and we talk about social media and we talk about video games, we talk about the shows that you watch and all that, we talk about the culture that we live in, Jesus would do the same thing. So in John chapter 10, 
Jesus is talking about a shepherd because they would have known what a shepherd's life was like back then. And he compares himself to a shepherd. He says, I am the good shepherd and you are my sheep and my sheep know my voice. And they, that would have made sense, sense to them because being a shepherd was a popular career back then. People would choose to be shepherds. Now, if you happen to know a shepherd these days, then you know one of very few shepherds left on the planet, especially uh, you know wherever you live. Maybe it's more popular, but where we are, not a big thing. I don't know a lot of shepherds, but they would have known. And so it would, would have made sense to them. So in John 10, Jesus picks up and he says one of the most famous things, another one of those verses that gets quoted all the time is John 10, 10. And Jesus says, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come, I'm here right now, that you might have life and life to the full, or an abundant life, or a life that overflows, and overflows not with material things. If that happens, that's great. That's not why Jesus came to the earth. If you think that Jesus came to the earth so you could have a lot of money and you could have a lot of prosperity, that's cool. It might happen along the way, but that's not why he came here. And that's not what we should be believing him for all the time. It's good to pray to God to ask him to help you get a job or to help you get into a certain school. Or you could even pray and ask God for a new pair of shoes. There's nothing wrong with any of that. You just can't make that the point. So Jesus doesn't make that the point. He says the life to the full that you have is that full relationship with God. And so who's this thief that he's talking about? So whenever Jesus is talking about a shepherd, a shepherd would lead his sheep to uh, green pastures and clean waters so they could eat and so they could drink. And so the thief is the person or the thing that wants to come and steal those things away from the sheep or steal the sheep themselves. So Jesus says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And I think we know who the thief Jesus uh, is talking about is, and it's the enemy. It's the devil. The devil is a very real entity on the earth. He's a very real spirit. It's not just like, oh, bad things happen. And sometimes bad things happen because we make dumb decisions. Don't blame your dumb decisions on the devil. That's cheating. Uh, sometimes you make bad decisions and you just have to reap the consequences. But uh, the enemy is very real and he wants to come into your life and he wants to steal kill and destroy your life. He wants to steal the good things that God has given you. He wants to steal that satisfaction that you're supposed to find in God. He wants to steal that from you and he wants to try to force you and lie to you until you try to find it somewhere else. Like, no, you can't find your satisfaction in Jesus. What are you thinking? No, you need to get your satisfaction from likes and follows on social media. You need to get your satisfaction from people approving of you because you get really good grades or you're really good at your sport or you're really good at your instrument or you're a good singer. You need to find your satisfaction from things that you can do, not from what Jesus did for you. And that's a lie. All your satisfaction should be in what Jesus did for you. Your full life comes from a full relationship with God, not from getting all A's, not from getting into that school, not from uh, being popular because you're good at something or because you're attractive. And if you're out there and you're one of those attractive people and people tell you all the time that you're really pretty, you didn't do anything for that, just so you know. I hate to knock you down a peg. Actually, I don't hate to knock you down a peg, but you didn't do anything for that. You won some kind of genetic lottery and your jawline is really square and your face is really symmetrical and you have nice eyes and good hair because somehow by God's will, your parents got together and you look the way that you look, not by any power of your own. So if you're pretty and you're always posting selfies and you think it's all about you, just know that God did that. That was a side note. You should not get your full life from the way that you look. You should not get your full life from anything that you can do. The abundant life that Jesus came to give you is the life that Jesus gives you. It's not anything that you can make happen on your own. So the enemy wants to steal that satisfaction away from God and he wants you to find it in other places. And then it says that the enemy wants to kill. That doesn't mean that the enemy wants to come in and murder you. That's not what that is. He wants to come kill you. He wants to lie to you 
and convince you to kill the good things that you have in your life. Do you have a good relationship? He wants to lie to you and tell you that that person doesn't love you the way that you think they love you, and he wants you to end that relationship. So that word kill doesn't mean like murder. It means that you give something up to be sacrificed. You give something up to be killed by the enemy. And so God has given you something great, but you're willing to give that thing up because you don't believe it's as good as Jesus says it is. You're willing to give up your relationship with Jesus because you think you can find a full life in another relationship. You think you can find something better in another relationship. Jesus has led you to the green pasture of a full fully satisfied relationship with God and you're looking over the fence and you think that there's greener pastures and greener grass and better water somewhere else. But that's not how it goes. Jesus has led you to the best thing, but the enemy wants you to kill that relationship with Jesus by finding, trying to find your satisfaction in another relationship. He wants you to kill the good things that God has sent you by thinking that you could find something better somewhere else instead of saying, God, thank you so much for giving me this amazing thing. And I'm going to honor you for it. And I'm going to praise you for it. I'm going to worship you because you're so awesome. And you led me to this great thing that I didn't deserve. But you've led me to an abundant life. And I want to see it the way you see it. And I want to find all my satisfaction in you. And I'm not going to give up my relationship with you because I know that there's nothing better than what I have with you. I know that this abundant life is the abundant life. And that comes from having a full relationship with you. So if the enemy can convince, can steal things from you, and if he can convince you to kill the good things that God has sent you, then he can destroy your life. But Jesus says, but I have come. So he says all that, it's depressing, but it's the truth. It's the hard truth that the enemy does come to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus says, but I have come that you would have life and life to the full, that you would have an abundant overflowing life that flows from your relationship with God. Because the reason your abundant life has to flow from your relationship with God is it's the only permanent thing. Everything else is subject to change. Everything else is temporary. But Jesus came so we could be connected to God eternally and that we could find all of our satisfaction in Him and that our abundant life could flow from our relationship with God into everything else. You can have abundant relationships with other people because of your relationship with God. You can have abundance on your job because you have an abundant relationship with God. And you can have a full life because you have a full relationship with God no matter what else is going on. Just like Paul says in Philippians 4, I've had everything, I've had nothing. I've learned to live in any circumstance. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The only reason he could write Philippians 4.13 is because he had a full relationship with God. And so your goal should be to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, through Christ who gives me a full relationship with God. When you know Jesus, it changes the way that you see everything else. When you find all your satisfaction in him, it changes the way you relate to everybody else because you're not reaching for satisfaction. You aren't relying or putting your faith in them to make you feel good about yourself because you know who you are in Christ. You have a full relationship with him. All your satisfaction is in him. All your approval is in him. Every good thing you have is from him. And you know that the only reason you have an abundant life is because you have a full relationship with God. And so there's a lot of ways to experience this. But the most simple thing to do is just start saying yes to what Jesus says yes to. And then you'll experience life the way Jesus experienced it. Say yes to prayer. Say yes to reading your Bible. Say yes to serving other people, to loving other people when they're hard to love. Say yes to forgiveness. Say yes to praise. Say yes to worship. And you'll see how your abundant relationship with God, your full relationship with God makes the rest of your life full as well.